So I'm chatting today with Blossom, who's currently in her second year on the BA Visual Communications Online degree at Falmouth. And the questions I'm going to ask Blossom have been written by Blossom to give us a bit of an insight about her influences and inspirations. So first question, Blossom, were you artistic as a child and did your parents influence your thinking about art? Well, I definitely always remember loving art. Um, I was, you know, drawing and making a lot when I was when I was a kid. And I remember my mum putting pictures of mine up on the walls that, you know, I'm sure a lot of people have similar. And I remember drawing a poppy, a drawing of a poppy that, that I'd done that she framed and she kept it up for years. And it was, you know, it was just a bit of felt tip pen on a piece of scrap paper, really. But it, it it made me feel it made me feel like I'd done something good, um, so yeah, I, I, I did. And and my mum, she was arty. Um, I mean, reputedly, she'd left school at fifteen um, and gone to art school. Um, and I remember that there were always sort of little pencil sketches and clay maquettes and things like that that she'd made around um, the house. And then later on, probably when I was bit more sort of influenced um she started sculpting in stone and she did art um evening classes and things like oh. that yeah um and I think she probably got going again once you know her kids are we, we got big enough to look after ourselves and so she had the sort of time and space so yeah she I mean my my mother was definitely one of my my big influences when it came to yeah being being arty really that's lovely my my parents weren't arty at all at all well um, just to show sure it doesn't really matter does it you, well you that's that's yeah that's true I mean they never um put me off but they, yeah just not in their thing really not just not their thing really anyway it's not about me it's about you um second question when did you realize that you wanted to pursue an artistic career path so I think pursuing a career path was a bit cloudy for me, full stop, really. Um, but at some point in my 20s, I in my 20s, I did a lot of not very creative work. Um, but and I think at some point in my 20s, I, I recognised that I couldn't be without art. Um, you know, you've left school and you, you, you don't realise, but when you're at school, art is built in. You, you don't have to make your own arrangements to do it. Um, and then, you know, you leave school and that and that's gone. There's no sort of, there's nothing built in for you anymore. And I didn't go straight to uni after I finished school. I traveled for a couple of years um, and after that I needed to work really. So I went straight into whatever work I could get. And I did lots of very, very uninspiring <laughs> jobs really. Um, lots of temping, lots of admin stuff, you know, stuff that really wasn't very creative uh, or, you know, you really wouldn't describe it as creative in any way. Um, and I think that's when I sort of became aware that I had the drive to make my own art and I always did something. Um, so I, I mean, in my mid twenties, I then went back to study for a couple of years and I did an HND in computer aided design and packaging design um which was almost a bit of a whim I was never going to do anything that wasn't sort of artistically orientated but um I didn't really know what I was going to do with it um and that it was following that that I then went back out to work and I got my first kind of uh artistically orientated work I suppose and I got a job as a design studio assistant which was quite good fun, actually. I mean, it, it had its moments. Um, and I loved that, that. It was quite a creative environment. So I loved that. And I kind of knew that was a tipping point and that I was never going to be able to go back to those very dull kind of, you know, data entry. You've got to make, you know, you've just got to make money type jobs. Um, was yeah. So a particular I, I reason that. why you chose that course? Do you know, it was a real whim. I was thinking about that. I was at a party and I met a woman who was a graphic designer. Mm. 
And I didn't really know what graphic design was at that stage. And I was talking, I was married at that stage and uh, quite young. And I said to my now ex-husband was saying about this woman that I'd met and chatted to. And I found the conversation really interesting and I was relaying it to him. And he just said, you could do that. And it literally was that moment. And I thought, yeah, I probably could actually. And it just rang a bell. And I thought, okay, I need to, if I'm going to do that, I need to get some more study done Mm. and start thinking about, you know, how I can direct myself in that way. Yeah. So it was funny, isn't it? What sticks Mm. with you? Mm. Yeah. Mm. And also there's those chance meetings sometimes, you know, we talk about Absolutely. networking a lot in the on the course, don't we? And even something informal, that's not kind of forced networking. That's just an informal chance meeting. But it, it, absolutely. a meeting and of I, minds, clearly. Definitely. And I think also because she was a woman, because actually mm. after that, I think I met a lot of, of graphic designers and they were mostly men, you know, and I don't think that it would have been so relatable. Mm if she hadn't been a woman and I you know I wouldn't perhaps have had that or I could do that um so yeah a real chance moment yeah brilliant yeah so how did you just talked about like that journey to your first design role how did your first design role influence the kind of work you do today so my first design job was really just typesetting um, and it was in a very sort of high end. It was it, it was digital. I've used Quark Express all day, every day. And um, it Those was with the days. <laughs> God, it was a terrible program. That. <laughs> um, it was very high end uh, stationary, basically. So mm-hmm. it was like, um, you know, smart correspondence cards, birth announcements, wedding invitations. It was it was a nice little outfit, but it was work that was all along those lines there wasn't much variation um I found for a lot of years you know I mean basically it it influenced how I look at typography Mm -hmm. without having really studied it I was just looking at it all the time and they had their in-house sort of styles so you never really looked beyond those um and I did find for a lot of years I couldn't look at a typeface I wouldn't even consider using a typeface if it wasn't an absolute classic you know, they were that they, they were the firm that I worked for. They were quite disparaging about anything that was like even vaguely sort of novelty. I mean, that would be like a sin. Um, so if it wasn't in Trajan or Gil Sands or Caslon or, you know, I don't know, I can't think what now, but, you know, it it wasn't it, it wasn't going to happen. Um, so it took me a long time to learn outside of that job how to experiment again Mm. um but and I think you know it's been slow progress to to experiment and do new stuff but what it did do was influence I think it influenced my own personal style more than even more than I realize Mm. and you said something to me the other day about you know something I'd created and it was it was informing but it was also still demonstrated my style and I thought oh have I got a style and I thought, well, yeah, I clearly have got a style. And I still think there's influence from those old days of just sort of very upright, very smart, can't argue with that typesetting. Mm-hmm. Um, I guess when I did say that, I didn't mean that you have a style. I meant that it's it's it was identifi- identifiably yours. Yeah, I love that. In the, I think that's yeah, in the, you know, just the way that you place stuff and the colors and uh, yeah 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 yeah. yeah I think yeah you're probably right it probably has really influenced you then I think it has yeah Yeah. it goes deeper than I really realize yeah but also now with that opportunity to experiment and not necessarily break away from that stuff but to um enhance it oh definitely I mean it that is that is really exciting and I feel you know we always say this don't we you kind of got to go there to come back somehow mm-hmm. um so yeah it, it's really exciting to experiment I mean it has been ever since and sometimes I definitely get it wrong and I go back to pieces of work and I think oh my god Michael Gibson my old boss would be absolutely <laughs> you know distraught if he saw that but you know you you've got to find your own way 
Yeah, and who cares about Michael Gibson now? No, no, oh, I love Michael. I did love him. He was a nice. No, I'm not saying that, but like you're you're your own person now. You don't have. Yes, to exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So thinking about that work that you do make today, how do you usually start? So, like usual, you know, a bit of blind panic, um, <laughs> a good helping of self doubt. But actually, more and more, I find that I can replace that with the research and that that phase. And now that I'm more aware of my own process and I am so much more aware, you know, I always had a process. It wasn't as embellished as it is now. But being aware of what you do means you can you can't necessarily sidestep them, but you can minimize the faff and the worry and the stages that are less productive um, because you've got that sort of stronger framework to sort of mm. start from. So, so yeah, I, I sort of can skip the, the doubt and the panicking and start to implement the process and start with that strong focus on research. And then at, it's bizarre, but at some stage during the, re, the research process, I usually will doodle something mm. And that is what then becomes the final outcome. And I've got, you know, I've started to sort of keep them in a sketchbook, actually, because it will be probably something quite small on a page. And I'll think, oh, yes. Oh, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll do that. And I'll, I'll usually tear it out because it might not be in the right sketchbook or in the right place. Or perhaps it's on the corner of a, you know, back, on the back of an envelope or something. Um but they do. They sort of. I find the doodle directly correlates usually to the to the final output, and I and I always think that's amazing. Mm. But that is that is the product. You know, it's not you just do a doodle and you make something. It, that the doodle is the product of the research, and it's all that information filtering down and eventually, hopefully, <laughs> coming out as something useful. Yeah, that's yeah. fascinating. Yeah. It is mm. quite interesting. Who knows what goes on in there? And know. also subconsciously. Yeah, well, I think a lot of it is subconscious. I mean, you do all this conscious level researching, mm. but then it's actually, it is the, the emphasis is always on that breaking away and stopping. Uh, you know, and, I, and actually, funnily enough, that's the bit I have to remind myself to do. It's like, mm. okay, stop, step away from it. We were talking about this earlier with our with our writing. You know, step away from it, put it down. Uh, and it, it, it's always helpful. Yeah. Yeah. I, some, yeah. I completely agree with that. Sometimes I will can't write step away from it and then I'm doing something completely different and an idea comes to me. I, yeah. need to write, I, I must write that down because that's, yeah. 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 But always, like you say, informed by the research. Yeah. 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 Final question. Um, just like me, you've done your degree later on in life. Um, was this an advantage or disadvantage, do you think? I think, I mean, I'm sure you're probably in agreement. I don't know if we've had this conversation, but it's been a massive advantage for me. I just wouldn't have known how to make the most of the course if I'd been studying straight after school. You know, I'd have been distracted by all the usual things that you're distracted by, by wanting to go out all the time and what have you. Um, whereas sort of, I'm really driven now by sort of lots of things, but the the sort of need to reinvigorate my career, mm. um, you know, which had become a bit stale and I wasn't feeling at all, I wasn't feeling very, I was feeling a bit creative, but not very. Um, so, you know, I just wanted to do it all, I want to do it all as comprehensively as I possibly can. Um, you know so I just sort of devour all the resources and and all the all the discussion and um really I just really enjoy it find it really informative um and it's it's massively working you know I am able to look again with fresh eyes you know I've learned so much new stuff um it's 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 changed how I felt about old stuff as well um you know, it's been like emptying out a cupboard of stuff, uh, uh, filling it all up again, but with more interesting, new and sort of stimulating stuff, but keeping the old stuff mm. just so that it's archived and a bit 
further back <laughs> in, in the loft yeah absolutely so it's yeah I mean you know yeah try not yeah. to mix metaphors there but well, yes yeah. it gives you a, a sort of nice strong I've got I feel like I had a strong base but it, I just couldn't build on it so it's it's really really helped me and I and I love it I love studying at this age it's mm. it, I think you know I feel like it should be compulsory <laughs> <laughs> great idea instead of kind of like an older per- not old person but older person's kind of national service Go and learn something. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I, I do agree with you to a certain extent but I did do a degree after a year on foundation and then did a degree and yes but I agree with you about the kind of you know when you're older you've got more experience but you've got more it's kind of almost more at stake yeah yeah um and also you uh, yeah definitely not distracted by all the parties and demonstrations and stuff that I did as a student well I think that's absolutely fair as well you know I think good that you you did all that you know it's yeah Mm. you got I I just think I feel very very lucky actually to be Mm. able to Mm. do um and I sort of hate to think where I'd be if I wasn't I'm really not sure you know what what that picture would look like yeah so uh, absolutely the same I completely relate to that yeah brilliant well that's all my um questions or all your questions done so I'm going to stop recording thanks Blossom thank you thank you